morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. This is a very special webinar that we are having today, talking about youth leadership in BPW. And our panelist is Lisa Fong. She is a BPW Hong Kong Club President. Darshini Shantanaman, Second Vice President of the club in BPW Singapore, Candice Chermuskin, treasurer of BPW Grand Cayman, Tamara Olguin from uh, BPW Mexico, she is the executive secretary, Stephanie Shamedi is vice president of programs of New York City Club in United States. And today, Dr. Anne Hilti will be the moderator. As you know, she is uh, the co-facilitator of this webinar series, and she is a member of the clubs in Hong Kong, New York, and now in Istanbul. Thank you very much. This is uh, um, a special uh, webinar for me because uh, we are working on this uh, uh, support to the young BPW members. And during this triennium, we have a remarkable young BPW international representative, Nelima, that is doing a great job. And this is part of what we expect all around the world. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, Dr. Ann. Thank you for being the moderator today. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Yasmin, our immediate past international president, as everyone in the room probably already knows, and a very longtime member of BPW and maybe one of our greatest supporters of this organization and of youth leadership. So thank you for that. Thanks to all of you for joining us. So we have five very special panelists today, and you've already been introduced to them. So we're going to jump in. We'll have a series of questions. And later in the uh, hour, we're one hour in this session, later in the hour, we will open up to the audience as well for questions or comments. So our first question is this, what strengths do you think young leaders bring to their leadership position? And we'll start, Lisa, with you. Thank you, Dr. Ann. I think in terms of strength, um, definitely I think with any young woman, that comes into BPW, they bring with them a lot of fresh ideas and also eyes in terms of looking at, you know, our, our whole association, like for us in BPW Hong Kong, is looking at, you know, the processes of the clubs that we have, how we're doing social media, how we're doing outreach to, to the community. And I think for youth leaders, we have a lot of power um, and also ambition and passion to drive a lot of this project. So I think um, those are, I would say, top three things that I see with BPW Hong Kong um, and, and new members that join our committee. Thanks, Lisa. Darshini? Um, sure, I'd actually um, piggyback off of what um, Lisa had to say. I think that the greatest strength that um, the youth bring to the conversation is diversity of thought. Um, I think every generation has really seen a different set of challenges come forth. And now we're going to see a whole new different set of challenges coming off the back of COVID as well. So it's always nice to be reminded of what challenges are right now that the youth are facing because you know in 20 years they're going to be in a position to give great advice to people um, down the road. So I think it's it's the diversity of thought I would say that that's been phenomenal. Uh, personally myself I started um, with the BPW organization in Singapore when I was youth, no longer sadly, but um, when I was a young BPW um, representative and um, I would say that um, just meeting others like myself, um, you know, I was able to also come across diversity from the more experienced stuff. So I think like um, for me, then the benefit, if I were to flip it around just a little bit and answer the question, was gaining access to that experience. So um, Great. that's what I'd say was the biggest strength. Thanks, Darshini. Candice, what about you? 
what strengths do young leaders bring? I certainly agree with Dashini and, and Lisa. You know, I think it's all about the perspective that we bring to the table. I think every generation is different in terms of what, you know, it drives them and what they're passionate about. So, you know, even if I take a look at uh, my sort of younger people that I work with, I think their drive, you know, is, is much more around the environment and things that, you know, at the time when I was that age was not necessarily at the forefront of my mind. So it's really the difference in perspective. It's the energy that they bring to the table. You know, they're enthusiastic about the projects that they're working on. And I think, you know, when we sort of look at uh, those that have been in the club quite a while, they're trying to juggle so many things that oftentimes you might lose some of that focus, you might lose some of that energy and that fervor to do things. And so it's great to have that young blood sort of come in and mix and, and get everyone energized and, and focus on a particular issue that just wouldn't have come to the table otherwise. So I certainly see it as a strength. I mean, you know, we're also looking at things like succession planning in the long term and keeping the club going. You know, there's so many different initiatives going on. And so without that kind of passion and fire lit under you, it's, it's kind of easy to, to lose focus and not achieve the things that you want to achieve. Okay, thanks, Candice. Tamara, how about you? Benefits of young leaders? Hi, well, I totally agree with them. Well, in my opinion, I think young leaders bring enthusiasm, a uh, fresh and uh, different point of view in order to solve problematics that the world has. Society and women live in the present because we are a different generation of women and the problems that we have right now are in certain way different than the previous young leaders kind in their moment. So I strongly believe that as a woman, uh, we have the power and the strength to overcome any limitation that we could have and we transform the world's crisis in opportunity to grow up and change our future and the future of the people that are around us. And this is very important because as a member of this organization, we're looking for a pretty in the society, mostly in girls and are in a vulnerable situation. So I totally agree with them. Okay. And finally, Stephanie. How about your views on this? Hello, everyone. Um, I'd agree with, with everything that was mentioned. Um, I also think that new perspectives are one of the biggest uh, strengths that young BTW uh, bring. And I would say for our club specifically, what that looks like, you know, since everyone brought up some so many great points, I want to highlight a couple examples, is um, focusing on technology and that has really helped us in this moment in moving everything virtually and holding programs virtually and also fo a focus on um, diversity and inclusion in our New York offices not just in age but also um, varying identities so I think you know those this is an example of what those new perspectives and re-energizing and new ideas look like in our club. Mm. Great. And Stephanie, you've led us right into our next question, which is what are the benefits of young leaders specifically in your club or federation? So you've given us some great examples. Lisa, you mentioned Hong Kong. Would you like to add anything in terms of direct benefit in Hong Kong? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, for us, the creation of a club and um, it's basically based on modeling youth leadership. Um, we have three presidents in the, in the past, two past presidents and me currently, and two of us are um, young BPW leaders. So that is at the core of our organization. We are also very digitally savvy. So we focus on a lot of our digital outreach to our members. We use WhatsApp, for example, which is a chat messenger to communicate with all our members. And this is to keep them up to date. I think current generation, everyone now, we're very, you know, on the pulse. We have our, you know, smartphones and, and a lot of digital um, solutions that we go to to connect with people. So I think that that's really key for us. Okay, great. Um, mm. Go ahead. So, sorry, lastly is um, the integration with youth leadership and, you know, regular BPW members. I think there isn't really a, a fine line at all. I think all of us 
when we join BPW, it is a community, it is a sisterhood that we're joining. So um, that that's also one thing that I want to point out. Mm, yeah, no division in Hong Kong, I know. Okay, Candice, what about you? How are, what are some specific examples in your club or federation? I mean, I, I particularly think for YBPW, they've done a fantastic job in general. Uh, you know, it's it's a core group, a handful. Cayman uh, is quite small in general. And so, you know, the diversity of the projects that they bring to the table, because everyone has such a different background. We have, you know, someone in IT, someone in finance, uh, you know, quite a couple in social work. And when you put those things together, some really brilliant ideas come out of that. I mean, we did over lockdown something called a virtual charity and essentially we had little tea boxes delivered um, to, to persons who wanted to participate and were able to raise quite a bit of funding uh, to donate to big brothers and big sisters here in Cayman and you know that's not something that personally I would have thought of um, as, as being something that would be so successful and so it's that kind of ingenuity bringing it to the table and saying hang on a second you know let's combine all of our different skill sets here and you know see what we can make really make happen and so I think from that perspective it's been quite interesting. We've used a lot of sort of the energy of the younger ones to try and uh, do a drive for membership you know be the one sort of on the front line and, and really I think overall the benefit for, for us is building that confidence you know taking someone who is quite young and not quite sure of what they want to achieve, not quite sure of themselves, and surrounding them with a powerhouse of women that can, you know, really set the examples, set the tone, they can go to them for advice. And I, I'd say, for me personally, that's been one of the greatest benefits, just having this diverse group of women that I can really see, you know, lead by example, and that's what I want to be. Mm, great. Tamara, BPW Mexico, some examples of the benefits of youth leadership. Well, I think um, to keep an organization alive, it's important to have successors uh, who have the same, the same interests, values, and goals as the organization. Having young leaders and guiding them in the development and growth, not only professional, but also in their personal life, guarantees that the organization perceives over the time with identity that gave it life. Not only perceive it, but also make it grow in order, principally, and with all the necessary requirements for its proper functioning. So I think this is very important because we guiding them in, in this way, so. Okay, great. And Darshini in Singapore? Absolutely, so I think um, for us, um, what we've seen is um, the youth bringing in a very different profile of businesses for us to take notice of, or just even entrepreneurs within the group are doing some pretty innovative stuff that they're coming forth with. Um, and then by extension, they're also able to raise awareness of charities and any uh, good work that we could be doing um, extended in the community uh, because of the kind of exposure that they have, which has been quite different from a traditional member base. So I'd say just again, bringing in a very, very different um, uh, not always digital, actually, some of them socially aware in a way in which we never conceived of before. So some um, very innovative uh, digital and also non-digital um, ideas coming to the fore. Okay, great. Okay, on to our next question, a little bit tougher. What are the challenges that you've faced, particularly as a young leader? Stephanie, let's start with you. Sure. So um, I would say one of the biggest challenges that I faced was, uh, as someone mentioned earlier, trying to figure out what it is that I want to do and figure myself out professionally um, while balancing the responsibilities of BPW. And so for me, what that looks like is balancing longer hours as a young professional um, and my new schedule and trying to figure out um, how that would work with my responsibilities at, as VP in New York. Uh, at the very beginning, I was in the process of looking for my first position and you know, I was able to dedicate a lot more time to that. And then once I settled into my position, my responsibilities at work just really increased. 
uh, especially as we went virtual. So for me, it was really about finding that balance and understanding how to manage both responsibilities and to, and to do that well. So I think that is one of the biggest challenges that I face personally. Okay, that might be a challenge at any age, that whole balance, yes. Tamara, what about you? Have you had challenges along the way? Yes, um, well, and the first challenge was to believe in me first <laughs> and change the way that the society and my family and friends told me that a woman has to be. They told me that I have to be men and marry someone of them and have kids, raise them, and it's okay. But it's not, it not my way. So and they told me that I have to put my dreams away in order to reach that. I had to face all of this. I had to think and act in different way. And I pushed my, myself to do things that I was afraid of. And I like to have vir virtual uh, sessions and to learn English and speak in, with other women around the world. And uh, right now, uh, for example, I'm studying for a third master's degree. And uh, despite the fact that I hear so many times why you are studying so much and I keep going no matter what they say to me. So uh, in order to prepare me and to be more professional for the things that, I, that we are doing in the, in the club. Okay, great. Dashini, going to come back to you. Same question. So I think um, uh, I, I'll give you a very tactical response with what I felt were my challenges when I came in um, as youth. So to speak, um, the uh, I actually struggle to understand just how the organization is structured, and I struggle to understand um, our constitution and the rules, and you know, just wrapping my head around it because I've never been part of a formal organization like that before. So I think for a lot of youth, and I and, and I recognize the same confusion with others when they came into the organization as well. We're just kind of looking at each other going, okay, how do how are we supposed to understand this? And what does this mean? And what, what do these laws mean? And why are, why are these procedures in place? And I think, um, fortunately, um, a lot of the more experienced um, members were phenomenal in coming forth to guide us along that journey. But I think very tactically speaking, it took a bit of time to fully understand why things are structured the way they are. Because if I think about some of the other non-BPW women's groups that I'm a part of, they're a lot more casual in nature. Um, they're intended to be a lot more peer-to-peer. -peer. There's a lot less administration and hierarchy associated with it. So I think that's the, it's a technical response, but I think that that's something that did end up taking a bit of time for me to fully wrap my heads around, uh, head around. And then we even talked about doing a session. And this was a few years ago. I, we never ended up doing it, but we actually talked about doing a session to educate our newer and younger members about why all of this exists and how it plays out and how it's connected to the wider ecosystem of BPW. Um, and I think that, that kind of education would actually be really handy upfront um, mm. to help ease people into it. Absolutely. Candice, what about you? Challenges as a young leader? Um, I think organizations have uh, probably been my biggest pet peeve. Um, uh, I am very methodical being an accountant. So, you know, I kind of come in and, and expect uh, a calendar of events. Here's what we're doing when, um, because we do have so many initiatives going on and it does get quite overwhelming with everything. And it's it's trying to find the right balance, knowing when something's coming up and, and you know, having the time to figure out if that is something that I, I want to be a part of, have the time to be a part of. And I'd say, you know, in Cayman in general, I think we struggle with, um, you know, figuring out exactly what initiatives we want. We want to have our hands in everything. And so we end up spreading ourselves really thin. As I mentioned before, we're quite a small group of people, you know, a, a core group that's doing maybe 10 to 12 projects at any one point in time. And so, you know, uh, there there's a saying about um, someone who's a jack of all trades is a master of none. And so I really want to be the type of group that when we do something, we're very efficient, we're very good at what we do and we bring quality to the table. And so often that that's a struggle when you're juggling so many different things, you know, not just within the club, but obviously you have your personal lives, your careers, et cetera. 
So that's certainly be a, been a challenge and, and that's something that we've discussed at our last meeting and you know, we're trying to nail down. So it's, it's good to see, you know, at least we're on the path to trying to correct some of those things. So you are the organized one, but the club maybe not quite at the level of an accountant. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, so you might call me a bit too organized. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, it works both ways. We've got to find a middle ground, that's for sure. Good. And Lisa, what have been your challenges? Uh, so I'm currently the president of BPW Hong Kong. And as I onboarded, I think I can talk about challenges for myself and, and perhaps my committee. I think it, it, it um, you know, it touched on two themes, basically time commitment um, but also synergy, which is a positive side of that. So time commitment, I think for myself, if you're looking at my background, I'm actually in my office right now and it's um, 8, 8.30, I'm still working. Um, I, I think it, it is really about balancing. So as Stephanie said, finding the balance between your commitment to BPW, um, your, your life. Um, I actually started an MBA recently, so balancing that as well into you know, the whole co cohort of things. But I also find by being in BPW, um, I learn a lot in terms of management skills. Um, I have to look after the committee. I have to arrange or, you know, oversee a lot of the events that's happening for the club. So I think for myself, that's definitely a benefit and synergy that I get from. And I think for my committee as well, um, all of my members, they have, you know, different organization that they're in outside of BPW. And it is not by design per se, but it is very helpful because you know, we have a speaker's coach at a TEDx event next week, um, and she is our international relations chair. Um, we have someone who is in you know, Junior, Chamber of, Junior Chamber International, and she is you know, our P public relations chair, and there's a lot of synergy, so we have been leveraging that a lot. So I think, yes, time commitment for all of us, it, it is a challenge, for BPW Hong Kong, but um, it also brings in a lot of benefits for us. Great. And we might mention, because this was an emphasis from the start in BPW Hong Kong, I think with maybe just one or two exceptions, your 11 member committee are all young BPW members. So that's a remarkable situation. Okay, going on to a very particular kind of challenge, which is this, do you feel that other executive members treat you as an equal member of the team, considering your age? Or if you are the president, I think this is just you, Lisa, do you feel that older executive or other members can fully support you in this role? So Tamara, let's start with you. How about okay, age okay. differences? <laughs> well, I don't think um, that's a problem because I do feel it. Uh, all members, no matter what position do they have, they treat you as an equal. And no matter the culture, the beliefs, the thoughts, the profession, I think um, all of us uh, try to be kindness and with all the members. I really feel like a family. <laughs> um, all are so kind. Uh, you can feel that they appreciate each member and you count on them in any situation. Um, professionally, if you have any problem or if you have a, a certain doubt, and I think we are a, a special family. Okay, great. Stephanie? So I, I also feel the same. I feel that um, I do get equal treatment actually um, as, a, as a member. Um, it was some of the people on the board who encouraged me to join. And so um, I didn't really know what those responsibilities would look like at the time, but I got a lot of support from them, um, encouraging me and constantly pushing me to, to go for the position. And once I became a part of um, our board, I was able to bring in, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of new ideas. And I was really happy to see that those were considered and implemented. So, um, you know, I definitely feel like the support, the encouragement uh, is there and people really do consider my ideas as being valuable. So um, that's something I, I definitely really appreciate about our chapter and about the organization. Mm. Darshini. 
Um, so I would echo the sentiment. I think generally speaking, it's been an incredibly welcoming environment. Um, we've had uh, past presidents who have been um, in the youth category as well, uh, successfully so. Um, I think in general, what we've also seen in Singapore over the last few years is actually uh, further pivot to the youth. So we did a bit of work to optimize our presence online um, and even our SEO, and then that automatically led to an, uh, a rise in the number in our youth membership, and then naturally within the exco as well. Um, so I'd say, but you know, largely speaking, everyone's been super welcoming. Has been great to offer advice and mem mentorship. So I would say um, it's actually been a very positive experience. Great, Lisa. How about as president? I think as president. We get a lot of insight and experience from regular member. I think, you know, having a few more years in their own industry, that, that's definitely a benefit. And, and we do get supported within our um, committee as well. Um, I think it's a matter of bouncing ideas back and forth, especially when you're in, in an environment where, um, yes, you have the age difference. But I think in Hong Kong, that's not a big factor that, that we look into. I think it is, it is the culture here as well. Um, so, you know, having friends that are in their 40s or um, 18, that I think it's not a, a big problem for us. Okay. And that's very different from Chinese culture in other countries, including China. So Hong Kong is a little bit unique in that way. Candice, what about for you? Absolutely, they've been supportive, but but not even that, that really struck me. It, it's really that they're invested in the younger ones. I, I can see the active thought process of seeing, you know, who might need that confidence boost, who might need, you know, to, to shine a bit and really sort of singling that person out and giving them the forum to shine and build that confidence. And, you know, I think it's been personally quite phenomenal to see some, you know, some really thrive on that and, and really get that footing. Um, and it's been eye opening for me because in the corporate world, it, it's never like that, you know, um, it, it's usually a climb to the top and, and you don't highlight the good that others do um, willingly. And so seeing that has really changed my perspective in terms of, of how I can conduct everyday life really. So I would say they've done an absolutely phenomenal job of investing in the younger ones. Okay, great. This is our final question for our panelists and Candace, I'm going to stick with you for a moment. So the last question we have for the panelists is this, what advice do you have for other young BPW members who would like to run for office? And we're not just talking about in your own clubs or federations now, but around the world. So Candace, first to you. I would say have, have the confidence in yourself. You know, you're not gonna do something great unless you put yourself out there. And you shouldn't really try to define what success or failure looks like in that context. It's gonna be a learning experience. So, you know, really try and believe in yourself. You, you're surrounded by a group of supportive women and there is really no better setting to take that step forward and give it a shot. Okay, great. Uh, Lisa. Um, I definitely echo what Amanda said. Um, I think it's also making it work for you. I think when you look at any organization or work or business asking for promotion, for example, you need to go out and get it. You need to have that confidence to go out and actually make it work for you, as I said. And BPW, we, we are all very open, you know, our sisterhood here. Um, so I think if you don't ask, you'll never know if you had the opportunity to be a youth leader and be in you know, the committee of your club. Okay, Darshini? Um, yes, plus one uh, to both what Candice and Lisa said, just lean in, say yes. Um, the amazing thing is people will come forth to help you after that, the more advanced um, and more experienced members are here to help with that. So say yes and then figure out <laughs> How, how you can uh, get all the support you need and you know nobody's ever going to turn you down to help you out so go for it great and just a little secret at any age we say yes and then figure it out that's very typical tamara how about you uh well achieving a position is finding and overcoming your own limitations and working on them so since i've been part of these organizations like 
two years ago, I've grown enormously in different areas of my life, uh, not only professionally, uh, impersonally, academically, and spiritually, because uh, this is an um, organization that is around the world, so you learn many things. So my advice is to have discipline and personal daily work with clear objectives, as well as your own personal project and that all your efforts are directed in that direction. This helps you to find a balance that will make you happy that that's because we are in this planet. Only when you're comfortable with yourself, you can help others. So I think it's my advice. Mm -hmm. Great, and Stephanie? I would echo um, Darshani's comment about just saying yes and, and figuring it out um, because I think a lot of times personally I you know I used to think that okay first I'll have the confidence to pursue this thing and then when I do I'll go ahead and, and try it out but I think especially for an organization like this where people are so supportive it's important to just to just say yes um, even if you feel for some reason that you may not be prepared or you may not be ready because the support is there. Um, you will get the support and you will get learning opportunities. And people are also very understanding if you have questions or if you made a mistake. So I think, you know, my biggest piece of advice is to really take advantage of an opportunity um, to run and to take a leadership position. Um, and it, it really pushes you and, and um, allows you to learn a lot about yourself and to contribute to the organization in a really positive way. Great. And to that, I hope all five of you say yes at the regional level and say yes at the international level and that you get voted in while you're still really young. So let's do that. So before we open up to the audience, I want our panelists just to have the opportunity to ask a question or maybe make a comment to any of the other panelists. So panelists, who among you would like to, to do so? Oh, radio silence. Well, I have one question. Oh, sure. Um, for example, for uh, Darshini, uh, what does failure mean to you? Because uh, in my case, I have, um, or I terrify when I make a mistake, so I don't know how to to face that. So thank you for asking that question, Tamara. I think it's um, this is a difficult one, right? Um, what does failure mean? Much like yourself, I think any time I feel like I may not do what I set out to achieve is failure. And it feels in the moment like it's black and white, like either I'm succeeding or I'm failing and that there's no in between. But so a little bit of like, oh, okay, so there's something that came out of it. And yeah, you know, I failed and this is how I reacted. And I'm proud of how I reacted. Or you think back and you reflect and you think about um, how it's not an entire failure <laughs> as you originally thought it probably was. Um, but I think this is a difficult question. Maybe I can chip in as well on that. I think for me as the president of a club, I, I think I am very scared of, you know, us not getting enough members, um, not having interesting enough programs, not having enough projects or twinning for that matter. And I think what it comes down to is your insight and um, your vision that you have for the club, for your role. I think if you're clear on that and you go forward with it, you deliver and you do the best that you can, it, it, will, it will turn out well. I think last Saturday we hosted a World Mental Health Day and also our fifth anniversary for BPW Hong Kong. We pulled that together in a week and a half because you know there there was you know still of course the COVID pandemic, um, but also there was a few logistics issue. We only have five committee there on the day, um, but but we managed to get you know 30 plus people over high tea and um, you know ce celebrate the club's um, anniversary. So I think it's 
basically just being involved um, and making sure that you have a clear vision in mind. Okay, like so I'll, sorry, uh, I'll ask for just one more. Yes, Candice, go ahead. As well, um, I, I think you really just need to rethink what your definition of, of failure is. I think if you look back at anything that you might have considered a challenge or failure in your life, to where you are now, you'd realize that it always propels you forward at the end of it. I think, you know, there are life lessons to be learned. And, and what we often get consumed with is this definition in our head that really confines us and, and puts us in this box that we can't seem to get out of. But failure is a natural part of life. You look at anyone's success story, anyone's life, and that's something that they would have faced. So I would say, you know, if, if something feels like a setback, know in the back of your mind that there's always going to be a lesson learned from that. So ultimately, at the end of the day, it, it's only a failure in your head if that's the way that you frame it. Great. Okay, one more opportunity for one of our panelists to ask a question of the panelists. So did any of the other of you have a question? If not, we'll open it up to the audience. I have a question, actually. Um, so what, what spurred you to want to join your local BPW chapter? Like what, what kicked off inside you that made you look for um, a group like this in the first place? I, I can take that one first. Um, so I come originally from a small island uh, in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. When I was growing up, um, you know, things were, were going quite well and uh, things started to deteriorate and deteriorate very rapidly. Uh, with that in mind, my parents always had as a dream for us to get out of there because they didn't see any form of future there. And so off I came to the Cayman Islands, uh, you know, to, to make a better life for myself, to have, uh, you know, a future for my family. And it really made me stop and think, you know, here I am leaving uh, an island paradise, really leaving my family behind because of societal breakdown. And it really got me thinking that I have a part to play. We all have a part to play and to ignore a problem, it, it doesn't improve. What you end up with is exactly that, people leaving places that otherwise they could have invested their time in and really made a difference in. Um, and so I came here, I, I have a young son, and it's in my mind up to me to do whatever I can to make sure that his future is bright, to make sure that society as a whole heads in the direction that, that I want it to head in, something that, you know, when I leave this earth, hopefully we can be proud and said we played our part. And I think if more people thought like that, if more people got involved, the difference would be tremendous. Mm. I would like to add to that um, because my experience was very different. I actually didn't seek out the organization. Um, I didn't know what it was. I actually had a friend who recommended it to me. And so I was coming from a position where um, she knew that I like to be involved in some of the initiatives that we are committed to. And so she um, suggested that I join. And so I think that really um, is a testament to how important outreach is and how important it is to have um, current members, young members, reach out to their friends and their associates to tell them about all the things that we're doing at, in the club. Um, because there are so many opportunities for new membership and so many opportunities um, to give young women, women generally, a chance to contribute to our organization. And so um, I just wanted to throw that perspective in there because I, I had no knowledge of the organization prior to joining. Mm. Excellent. Okay, a great big, huge and wonderful thank you to all of our panelists. We're now going to open it up to the audience. We've got remaining 20 minutes, uh, but at least 15 of that will be discussion with all of you. So I see already a hand raised over by Francesca. Francesca, would you like to jump in first? Yes, I was having trouble with my video. Um, I just wanna do a shout out about Stephanie, who um, she's been a wonderful VP of programs and um, you know, I can't 
uh, talk enough about having young people on a board and uh, welcoming them and giving them opportunities and letting them just fly. And Stephanie is, has really been a model for vice president. And I just wanted to acknowledge her publicly for that. And thank you, Stephanie, for all that you've done. It's really been a pleasure working with you. And for anyone who doesn't know, Francesca is president where Stephanie is a vice president in the same club. And as well, in about three days, Stephanie will be ending this position. So that's the context there. Okay, and Nilima. We Yes, and Francesca too. <laughs> Nilima, we absolutely want to hear from you, our young BPW international representative. Oh, thank you, Anne. It's so wonderful to see that, you know, you all are in the National Executive Board. Uh, to tell you the truth, it was, it's not easy for all the young members. I don't know how it, easy was it for you. Because I remember in 2016, when I, was, when I wanted to be the young representative of my country, uh, I asked for election to be elected to be the young representative, but out of nowhere, there was another young member who was, you know, given that position. I was so mad that I applied for international and I'm happy it happened to me so that I'm an international now. But what I've experienced uh, from that, uh, you know, thing is that it's not easy for all the young members to get, get an opportunity in a national or local level. And I see that hierarchy is one of the poor problem there. We see it's almost everywhere around the world. But the second problem is nepotism and favorism. How much have you all faced that? And have you tried to, you know, make sure that the members join on the basis of their talent more than, you know, being somebody's uh, daughter or somebody's relative? So have you seen that? And how have, how have you worked on it? Because one of the major problem in BPW I have seen is the reason, there, there are lots of reasons to join BPW, but most of the members, they leave because of this. And I have met them personally. So what do you have to say about this topic? Oh, Neelima, I'd love to jump in and just make a comment about this. I think, no, thank you for raising this. This is a sticky issue, right? Um, and I think while largely speaking, things are quite positive. The hierarchy issue is, is a real challenge, no matter where you go. <laughs> and yeah, more so in BPW. Um, I would say one of the wonderful things about being um, in the youth category is the innocence associated with it. So we're able to ask difficult questions or ask why something was held a certain way because we're not necessarily tainted by years of um, hierarchy or that we haven't been kind of hammered into position um, that we don't want to ask those questions. So I do remember in my first couple of years, you know, a lot of the AGMs, I was like, why are we doing this? And, you know, ask a lot of the difficult questions, but with the right intentions to try and uncover genuinely um, why certain decision making has been made. And is it just tradition that's causing decision making to be made a certain way um, over the last 10, 20 years? Or is it is there a deeper reason, right? Is it our constitution that allows us to make certain decisions or is it something else? So I think um, one of the wonderful things about being youth is you can actually go ask those difficult questions, but obviously you want to do that in the nicest possible way with the right intentions to um, challenge what is otherwise the status quo within the group. Um, now, uh, we lost a few members to some of the hierarchy as well, because that gets tiring for a lot of people to deal with. Um, but I think that once we actually started pivoting towards more open thinking and having these open conversations and having more of these difficult conversations, we started attracting a different type of member group and we started to see the youth come back as well over the last few years. So um, I'd say, you know, use the questioning, um, ask the difficult questions. It's, it's hard to, but it's, you know, for the right intentions and it makes the right change. But congratulations to you on making it to international despite all the hierarchy. So, and you know, we're, we're seeing this play out so nicely. Okay, any other panelists want to respond to Nilima's question? If not, Dr. Yasmin? Yes, thank you very much. I have a question to the panelists. Uh, when I, um, Joined BPW and when BPW started, it was um, not no many 
uh, international women organizations. Now we have a lot. What do you think is the difference that makes you to decide to belong to BPW International instead of any other of the women organizations that we have uh, currently? Um, maybe I can take that first. Thank you, Dr. Um, Yasmin. For Hong Kong, we do have a lot of other women organization here. Um, they are mostly local in nature, and I think for us, BPW Hong Kong stand out um, because we have this international element to it. I think, um, you know, the twinning part that we have, that's all, that's all very important in terms of um, bringing in the member. We also keep them up to date in terms of international events that's happening, you know, with UN Women, um, with CSW, and I think that's something that members cannot get elsewhere. And I think for me, I, I think we, ha we did a survey actually with our members and most members join because they hear the name, you know, business and professional woman. It's a great name that we have, right? But most of them stayed because of the sisterhood of, you know, the club that we are. And we always said, you know, we're not a club for everyone. We're not being picky or anything, but you know, you've got to have a certain type of mindset um, you got to be involved, you got to be passionate, you got to be engaging. And I think those are all characteristics that all of us as um, BPW members share. Um, and those are the people that we would attract into our club. Hmm. Anyone else want to address Dr. Yasmin's question? Why BPW rather than another women's organization? Okay. All right, who else would like to join in the conversation? I'm looking around the room for a hand raised. That pen raised is Carmen? Okay, Carmen. <laughs> Hi, um, I just made a few observations from, from the conversations. Um, Candice, I love the idea when you said, uh, you get young to drive the membership. So you get a young member to drive it. Uh, that's something I never thought of when we go out to do recruitment. Uh, and in Ireland, we've very few young BPW. It's probably the wrong face that's doing it. We should really encourage the one or the few young people we have to actually sell us because that's the future. So um, I think that was a very good point. Um, I thought also that uh, Darish, is it Darish? Sorry. Um, I, I'm a great advocate at the moment for brand BPW and that means that people don't know what we're about and I think you brought that point up when you said when you joined first uh, like what were we, what did we do, what was the constitution, all of those things and I think we, we really are falling down on that brand BPW, we need to to get together and decide what we actually are and have that one piece of information worldwide of BPW, what we are and what we do and why we do it. And I do think we fall down on that. Um, to attract, to, uh, that in turn will attract new members to our club. So I suppose the one thing I just want to say in regards to the hierarchy that Nalima brought up, we always have to remember that BPW is not just about one person. And sometimes that comes across in, in clubs and in uh, across the whole of BPW and I just wonder sometimes why we don't speak out or why are we afraid to say that in certain circumstances even within your clubs and that if somebody thinks it's all about them it's not it's about you as a collective group it's all about us as women and what we do for each other and to help each other so they're just observations I made from I think they're just wonderful young BPW members well done Great. I don't see another hand up at the moment, or do I? Not right now. So I'd like to ask a couple more young leaders in the room to join in the conversation. Haney, may I ask you to comment or join in? Um, yes. Uh, well, thank you for all the panelists. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. And um, well, uh, I have just one comment. Uh, it's about uh, but uh, Carmen and Candice said, uh, actually, um, 
uh, club's uh, newest member who uh, joined life in last week uh, was um, uh, speak at uh, our 70 plus uh, secretary so so it's not always the age it's uh, more like what you say and so on uh, for me I think the right words were like um, uh, you already had um, I think it was uh, in Congress in, in Switzerland and when they uh, hear that I study law then they tell me about the Charter of uh, Girls' Rights and uh, tell me that oh you have been there and so that was what told me this uh, organization. So okay, thanks, Haney. Haney is the young BPW representative in Finland. Pramila. Pramila. Yes, there can she comes. Can we yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just want to know about the young BBW members, how to activate them, or how can we attract the new members to join our uh, young BBW club? This is always the hot topic. What activity shall we do? And what are the, all the young leaders are doing in this uh, national Today, as we have the uh, national leaders of the young BBW, I want to know from them what are they doing, what what type of activity attracting the new members mm. of the young BBW. Thank you. So, panelists, how to attract more young members? So, I think um, both at my workplace and with BBW, I think the most um, effective tool is through referrals. So friends, bring your friends. Um, and we did a couple of things to incentivize um, uh, people bringing their friends in to a lot of our events, especially the youth, give them discounted tickets. This was when we could meet in person or even once we switched to online sessions and coffee conversations, we'd have people bring their friends along. And then, you know, there's a certain conversion rate that sticks, but it's higher when you're a friend of a friend as opposed to just a fresh uh, face off the street who found us on um, Google or elsewhere. I think that's one. So um, create some kind of a referral program, incentivize new people to come in through the door, let them experience the community. And you know they have the opportunity to identify if this is a good fit and you have the ident opportunity to then identify if they are a good fit for you as well to Lisa's earlier point about the kind of people you want to attract. Um, and then um, the other piece I'd say that we haven't made a lot of progress on, but we've been talking about off late, is actually engaging with associate members, so student members early. So going really, really young, engaging with them early, um, having them join our database early so that can then grow them um, into full um, YBPW members. So I think um, a couple of different things we're trying some working very well, some we still have a bit of work to do. Uh, I could chip in as well. I think for young BPW members, um, we in Hong Kong, we offer them 50% discount in membership. So I think one thing is mon monetary, um, making sure that there's a very low barrier for them to join us. Um, and two is the attractiveness of um, the programs that we offer. So I think over the you know over the course of the year we have had you know insights into the type of training program that young bpw want um you know this includes basic support on your cv resume how to pre present well um you know public speaking I, I think just very basic stuff that you know we're all very savvy in but for young bpw members and those that join us they they would be looking for those resource and those support so I think sort of having that program to tailored for them, that is something that you can definitely look at. Um, I think mentorship program is a great way to get university students um, and to sort of plant the seed young, making them um, think of BPW. Because for me, I actually learned of the BPW club in Hong Kong before our current club. So we have two chapters. I actually knew the chapter before when I was in university because there's a bursary that they have. Um, and, you know, 
six, seven years later, I joined and now I'm running, you know, I'm the president of the club here. So I think never underestimate the programs that you run. Um, that's always very, very essential. We're actually going down all the way to primary school. We have another program that um, target primary, primary girls um, and to educate on sort of more, more focus on gender equality, but that's another story. Great. Any other panelists want to respond to this question? And this will be our last audience question before I turn it over to Dr. Yasmin. Uh, panelists? I think Kim and I found what's been uh, quite a good opportunity is really highlighting what um, the young VPW members do. So we really give them the opportunities when there's trips coming up to attend events, they usually get the first go at, you know, in terms of who we're going to send if we're having an event. And let's say that's being attended by the governor or ministers in cabinet, we try to pair them up as the ones that will escort those people in. And so they really sort to, to see how it's beneficial to themselves getting these kind of opportunities. And then aside from that, we've really tried to cater for what general Generally, um, you know, the younger crowd likes to do. So when we're having a YBPW meeting, sometimes that might be, you know, a, a social um, with over some wine. Uh, that definitely tends to get people going. And then we've been trying to do what we call fit and fun. So, you know, whether it's attending a walk or a fitness class or, or something that's just quite young and fresh. And I feel like, you know, that's gonna get us a lot of traction because there is a lot of outdoor activities that happen here and, and people do like to play sports. Um, and we are looking at mentorship as well. If you're doing a mentorship program with us, you know, we hope that you commit to being involved in, you know, X amount of VPW activities on an annual basis to keep that mentorship going. And hopefully that builds a foundation of them wanting to join when they no longer have that sort of stipulation built in there. Great. Okay, one last opportunity to either of our other panelists, if you'd like to answer this question. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over now to Dr. Yasmin, who has her own comments to make, I believe, and then Yasmin, if you'll bring us to a close. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anne. Uh, for me, it is uh, very impressive to see how uh, our young BPWs are growing up in our organization. For example, Tamara in BPW Mexico, it's a totally different person that I met a couple of years ago. I'm very proud of her. Same uh, as Nelima. I remember the, the first time that I met her. Now it's like a, another person, very confident. And uh, I think that, that this is part of, uh, of, uh, of our training. Uh, uh, it is not only about BPW issues, it's about the confidence that uh, we can bring as an organization, as as uh, a group, this this uh, way to work. BPW, I always said, is uh, uh, the best university to train women to work with women because we are not used to to work uh, as a team. Uh, usually, women work by their own and succeed uh, by their own. But now we are here um, uh, in this organization that the difference that I want you to bring to everybody is exactly the name. We are the only one women organization around the world that have members, business and professional women. All over, or all kind of women uh, uh, that are, have a profession or a business are welcome to our organization and that make a, a big difference in between the other organizations around the world. So I want, I don't know if you want me to close the, uh, the session. Thank you. I am closing now because uh, I used to do it, uh, uh, but now uh, she accepts to, to be a moderator. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Anne, for all the work that uh, you are doing for this uh, training webinars without your support. This will be never uh, um, uh, the success that we are having since more than a year that we start. Thank you for the panelists. 
you are a very, very good example of how BPW International can get more and more young BPWs around the world and uh, keep the, the good work uh, going. Thank you for the uh, participants today. And we um, welcome you to visit our um, YouTube channel that we have more than 40, I think, already uh, videos. And that, that is uh, uh, also that you can use it uh, in your meetings to train your new members or to get more information about BPW. And we are always at your uh, uh, disposition if you need any kind of guide. Here is the uh, past international president, Sylvia Perry, with more than 50 years in BPW. And uh, she is passionate about, about it and, and, and a, a good example how BPW keeps you in because we are really, uh, we really believe in, in our goals and in mission and vision of this huge organization and amazing organization. Thank you very much. Thank you all, all of you to being here today. Thank you.